Hey guys, uh, so we got a pretty solid rain today and uh, I didn't have to come out, I don't have to water. We're probably gonna have a couple more rains. The swale filled up, drained. And uh, sorry, there's a car coming by. And uh, things are looking pretty good. I've been chopping and dropping a few things where I can and also um, wherever I find dock leaves or weeds that I want to throw on the ground or weeds that I pluck out of the garden I lay them on top so trying to get this mulch down before I go on a big trip I'm gonna leave this garden completely unattended and I might uh, use some aromatic protection for the things that I don't want the deer munching on and that's actually what I wanted to talk about today now a lot of people um, well, actually, it's a very controversial topic. Like, a lot, of, a lot of people disagree with it. A lot of people, you know, they ask tons of questions about it. And that is companion planting. Now, do I necessarily believe that, let's say, tansy is good for, you know, my grape plants? No, I don't necessarily believe that. But what I do believe is that plants do form uh, certain kinds of relationships. And um, each plant, when attacked or when threatened or even when cut, like for example, when you cut your grass, it releases a strange smell or a sweet smell. And these are all volatile organic compounds. And all plants release this, uh, this volatile organic compound, especially when under stress. And it's just a way of releasing chemicals into the air, saying, hey, I'm, un I'm under stress, I'm being attacked, I need some help. And usually these chemical signals will bring in beneficial bugs that come and eat the aphids or eat the slugs or whatever's attacking your plants. And I'm not really sure about the science behind it. I've read a few scholarly articles on the topic. But mycelium also plays a role in this as well. So here's an example of a little companion planting that I had. The deer were munching on this. So I chopped up some bee balm, threw it on top. But I also planted back spearmint. Um... <laughs> Another thing about this too is the spearmint's going to act as a ground cover. It's going to die back in the fall. It's going to feed this plant some nutrients. It's going to lock the moisture in. We're in a pretty shady spot, but I have this big apple tree, which is going to also act as my trellis. So all these things come into play when companion planting. But at the same time, I've used mushroom spawn in my garden. I'm going to be using mushroom spawn here as well. And the mycelium, mycelial hairs, make connections with other plants and they exchange nutrients. But not only do they exchange nutrients, they exchange these organic compounds. They're also released through the root system as well. And this allows other plants, neighboring or adjacent, to help in any way, shape or form they can. By also releasing these organic compounds and bringing in things that can be beneficial to your garden. Like... Praying mantises, or ladybugs, or predatory wasps. Anyways, guys. Sorry about the cars here. It's just a short video on um, explaining what I believe and what I, why I like companion plants. Thank you.